Hello everybody, my name's Walter. I'm taking you guys um, on a little tour of Central Park today. So before we get into the park, um, just a little bit about where we are right now in terms of your geography in the city. We're at the southeast end of the park at 59th Street and 5th Avenue, um, which is kind of connected to the Upper East Side of Manhattan. You ever hear that term? That's kind of where we are right now. We're on the lower end of the Upper East Side right now. Um, Central Park stretches from 59th Street, where we are right now, up to 110th Street in Harlem. That's about two and a half miles, and it goes across a half a mile from 5th Avenue over to 8th Avenue. And that's kind of where we're going to end up a little bit later on, on the west side. So we're going to sort of traverse uh, the park from east to west and do a history of the park, check out some cool monuments, and talk about some interesting sights and uh, some sounds in the park as well. You hear the chirping birds out there. Um, before we get inside, a little bit about um, a couple of the landmarks we're uh, looking at right now. Now, Chris, if you go over this survey, the big white building right over here, that is the very famous Plaza Hotel, which opened up in 1907. If you guys ever um, read the Eloise books, she lives in the plaza. Also, Home Alone 2, oh. if you recall, before he became president, uh, future president Donald Trump, uh, he had a scene with Macaulay Culkin inside the Because Trump Tower, by the way, guys, is right up the block over there, the big black building. It's like the Death Star over there. That's it right over there, basically. A big black building yonder right over there. And right in front of us, the tan building with the brown roof over there, that is the very uh, famous department store Bergdorf Goodman, which at one time... Um, was the mansion for the Vanderbilt. That was the Vanderbilt man. People lived in that at one time. Now it's a giant old department store. Um, and so, you know, just let's give you a little bit of a lay of the land. Let's get inside the park and get cooking on, on the park itself. Should we do it? Should let's, we do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, and uh, by the way, also in front of us, right, a beautiful gold leaf statue of William Tecumseh Sherman. He was a general in the Union Army during the Civil War and after the war as well. We've talked about Sherman a couple times on some of our tours and in the last couple weeks. In fact, speaking of the Civil War, uh, I'll get into the dates of the park when we get inside, but long short, the park opened shortly after the Civil War, um, and there is a lot of Civil War imagery connected with the park inside, and I'll point out a few of those things as we go through the tour today. So guys, let's go across the street and get into the park, and I'll start giving you some, some of the history of, like, why it even exists let's talk about that like why does this park even exist a good question my buddy and also yeah. co-host uh, jason good enough uh, is writing that his dad worked right behind where we were on uh, uh nine west uh, 57th street okay cool. and actually his daughter I don't know his name is eloise um, ah. there's a store in the you know the eloise stores in the basement yes it is right over there in the plaza food Pretty hall cool. over there yeah uh, hail horseman says hi love the plaza hey lorraine musha says hi from kingston new york uh, Tobias Maya is sending greetings to you from Hey, Tobias. Germany, uh, which is great. Folly Dude is a regular follower. All right, we got a lot of people. Let's wait for uh, the next hi. one. Um, and uh, Hey, Pri Long, uh, writing from the Philippines. Thanks right. so much. Hey, Pri Long, how you doing? Jason grew up uh, at 80th, 80th and Park. Park. Nice. So, we're, in, we're in your hood, Jason. Totally. Very cool. Uh, Luis, where are we? We are at Central Park. We're going to Central Park. Yep, 59th and 5th. Right now. So if you've been to New York, Luis, we're right at the southeast end of the park. Gabo Candal, who's the hey, guy who's do, who oh, did the Buenos Aires tour last week and again He's going to do it in Espanol, yeah. Yeah, he's doing it in Spanish All this right, week. All right, cool. Hey, so Gabo. thanks, Gabo, for checking in. Gabo. How's the, guys, let us know real quick, how's the volume? The volume's uh, great. How's the I video? How's it working out for you? Cool. Let us know, okay? We got the light, we got the light, let's see, let's make sure we got the light. I'm sure we do, but we can actually can still make a right on this, make sure we got the light. So fun fact about, you know, uh, me in terms of uh, the park, my relationship to it. My dad worked for the Department of Parks. And when I was a kid, guess where he worked? Central Park, right over here at the awesome. zoo. And my parents, they had their honeymoon at the Plaza Hotel and they got married. So how about that? So, very, I'm very connected to the neighborhood. You are. Yeah. You are indeed. <laughs> I'll go over this way into the uh, southeast entrance of the park. And yeah, for those of you who have never been to Central Park and are sort of looking at it right now, yeah, you see cars, you hear beeping horns. It's an urban park. It's right in the middle of Manhattan. So you actually step out 
of all the concrete and all the horns and all the, you know, all the stuff going on the street and you step into a beautiful park, right? It's literally named Central Park. It's in the middle of Manhattan. So let's go. Let's go talk about that. Come on inside. It's a beautiful day, Walter. It's you. We could not have picked a better day for this. Literally, for those of you who are tuning in now, and you know you're not in New York, it was raining cats and dogs the last couple of days. It's going to rain later in the week. And a few weeks ago, when we talked about doing this tour, Chris was like, "What day do you want to do it?" I'm like, "I don't know. We could do it any day." I'm like, "Let's pick one." And I'm like, "Fine, Tuesday." And as it turned out, it was the day to do this tour. It was a perfect day. Hey, well, before you get into it, just yeah. tell people a little about yourself because there's a lot of people yeah. who have, if you if you guys have done a tour with Walter before, and some of you have already said, like Diana, you said to yeah. me before, that's great, thank you, say hi yeah. again. But if you've not done a tour with Walter before and this is your first time doing a tour with Walter, um, let us know because I think we, we want to do a quick, just a quick hello, Walter, yeah. so you guys know who they who he is. Oh, so, so there's a little bit of, uh, they, so, know, they know you. So a little bit about, a little bit about me. Yeah, just a little bit about so I'm a native New Yorker. I grew up in Brooklyn and Queens primarily. I've lived all over the city. I lived in Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. Not Staten Island. Of the five boroughs, I've not lived in Staten Island. No offense to those Staten Island. It's not on the bucket list is all I can say about that. I also went to school in New York City. I went to John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which is right across us on 59th Street, basically on the west side from where we are right now. So when I was in college, I actually commuted to school from home. So I didn't have that, you know, go. So I've been in New York my whole life. I've never lived anywhere else. Um, I would be useless outside of the city. I'm good in New York. I could show you around here. I know all the nooks and crannies, but can I change a tire on the road? No, I can't do that. Can I start a fire in a log? No, nah, man, I'd be, I'd be meat anywhere but New York City. New York can grind you down, but I'm good with this, but anywhere else, I'm pretty. I'm, so this is this is my town, basically. Yeah, a little bit about me. Cool. Awesome. And by the way, my mother and father grew up in New York City. My mother's from the Bronx. My father's from Manhattan, and their parents came over from Ireland. Um, so technically, I'm third generation, I suppose. Third generation New York. Awesome. They went right to Ellis Island. So yeah, the roots go back over 100 years in the city. Yeah. Cool. So shall we start the tour proper? Thank or you watch for the out Yeah, cool. Oh. So let's start. As we're Oh, by the way, this is nice and informal. I love, I love the vibe here. Should we walk and talk while I do the little, like, the overview of the history of the park, or do you want to do that more stationary? What do you think is a better idea? Walk and talk. Let's great. walk and talk. We, we can see more. Yeah, that. well, you can pan around a little bit. Yeah, so Chris, let's talk a little bit about Central Park and why it exists. So, we're in the middle of Manhattan right now. That's how it gets the name Central Park. So let's talk about why the park would even be here. So go back to the mid-19th century with me. At that time, New York City had under a million people, but several hundred thousand, there were about six to seven hundred thousand people around 1850 in New York City. And there were something like seven to eight public parks. For those of you who have been on our downtown free tour, that Bowling Green Park is the very first um, incorporated city-run park in New York City. But there were only seven or eight parks in the entire city for about 700,000 people. So we were not utilizing our space very well in terms of the green stuff, basically. Um, so there were some concerned citizens saying, hey, look, we have this sort of urban development coming up here. Um, lots of, you know, industrialization. You know, we're in the, in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. We need a place where people can get, get out of that. So what do we do about that? And um, a couple of people were central to Central Park, one could say. Um, one of them, if you've been to New York City before or you live here, um, with a guy named William Cullen Bryant. Now, William Cullen Bryant was the publisher of what was known at that time as the New York Evening Post. It's now known as the New York Post. It's a big newspaper publisher. And he used his newspapers to advocate for public parks. Like, we should have a park right in the middle of Manhattan. Eventually, the city comes around to this idea. Like, hey, you know, that's a really, Bryant's idea is a very good idea. We should have a park. Um, so. Bryant's original sort of idea for the park is a kind of where the park is right now. So like I said a little earlier, Central Park goes two and a half miles from 59th Street up to 110th Street across from 5th Avenue over to 8th Avenue. Now you notice these rocks that we're looking at over here and there's going to be more ahead. Um, that was sort of the terrain of this area. So this was a mix of farmland 
and rocky terrain over here. And it was sort of a gritty farmland. The southeast end of the park, where we are right now during the mid-19th century, was, I kid you not, a pig farm. We're standing on the remnants of a pig farm right now. And the rest was sort of rocky and hilly. And there were about one to two, maybe even more, about two to 3,000 people living in the parameters of what Central Park is nowadays. Um, so once they decided they wanted to basically turn this rocky terrain with pig farms on it into a park in the middle of Manhattan, they had to actually come up with a plan. And there were several submissions. They basically opened it up to, uh, you know, submissions. Um, and eventually the plan they settled on is known as the Greens Ward Plan. And it's designed, two people are behind this, uh, primarily. A guy named um, Frederick Law Olmsted and a guy named Calvert Barr. Olmsted is the, I guess you'd call him the primary landscaper of the park. It was his idea to have, you know, the hills kind of run the way they do and the cursive roads run the way they do. Calvert Vox um, is the architect. Show him a swing down here. Calvert Vox is the architect. So he came up with all of the stone bridges and the masonry around the park. Um, so the Greens Ward plan was adopted in 1858. Um, and it takes 18 years, technically, for the park to fully open. Um, it opens, it begins to open in 1871 and then fully opened by 1876. Now, there's a fun fact about the park, and it's hard to believe for a lot of you, everything in the park is brought in by human hands. Wow. All the trees are planted, all the fauna, all the flowers, even the water. So by the way, guys, this is the very famous duck preserve here at the southeast end of the park. Even the water is pumped in water. This is not a natural lake. The ducks don't care, though. I always say that. They just like, hey, there's water here. We're going to take, and they've taken to it literally like ducks to water, basically, over the course of time. And if you look over here, guys, we even have turtles in the park. You can see them. They are, they are not indigenous to the park either, obviously. Um, at one point, probably very early on in the park's history, uh, someone brought Mama Turtle and Papa Turtle to the park, and uh, sort of their spawn is in here all, all these years uh, later, basically. So, we got, so when you're in Central Park, you know, you, you, get, you, you got some turtles, you got some ducks. And again, remember, everything in the park is brought in by hands, except for one thing. Chris, if you look over as we swing around here, let's actually swing over right over this way, yeah. buddy. And you see the people on top of the, uh, of the rock formation over there. These rock formations are the one thing in the park that is indigenous to the park. It's known as Manhattan schist. You gotta be careful how you say that word, I always say. Um, it's granite rock. Um, they've been exposed to life for about 40,000 years. 50,000 years ago, the last ice age kind of ended, and about 10,000 years after that, ice sheets came down from the north and kind of cut through the, uh, through the plains, basically, and exposed the rock to light. But there are about 200 million-year-old rock formations. Oh, wow. Tons of it were dynamited out to basically set up the terrain of the park as we see it nowadays. But, of course, they kept a whole bunch in because it makes for amazing landscaping. And, of course, great urban rock climbing, which is sort of a pastime uh, here um, in New York mm -hmm. City. So that's, that's where the name for Manhattan comes from, right? That's Canada right. Away, Manahata. Manahata, Native American term, the Lanape, they used to call it. It means land of rolling hills, land of many hills. And, by, yeah, so, you, you know, so we got, some, we got some geese, we got some ducks. And like I was saying, I think it was uh, Diana asking before. She's a birder, right, Diana? Uh, Alexa. Alexa, sorry, Alexa. Uh, Alexa's a birder. Um, the, the ducks are perennial here. The geese, but we have swans come in. And, and, and you know, as we go through the park today, um, we'll see, you know, there, there are constants here, too. We have, you know, the, the English sparrows are always here. The woodchucks are always here. Uh, but cardinals, blue jays, all kinds of things come in here. In fact, we have the hawks in the park as well, which were gone, which I'll get into a little bit later on. They were not in New York City for a very long time due to the environment here. Um, like I said, pumped in water, and you can see it does get a little bit dirty down there. There's some, but they do, they're, they're, they do a good job of cleaning up, but it is pumped in water. This way they control the level. So when there's a big rainstorm, they recede the water back a little bit, and when things are a little bit dry, they can pump it in a little bit. So it keeps the ducks and the geese happy, basically. Okay. Let's go over this way, Chris, and talk about some other things. Uh, Diana Pombo says, 
Yes. Uh, I love Walter's I kid you not expression. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Shannon says hello to the turtles. Hey, uh, turtles. <laughs> Nessia Silva is watching uh, from Florinopolis Island in Brazil. Oh, right. Uh, thank you. Alexa properly called out the mallards. Um, Jericho mentions what a beautiful day it is. Everything looks so it's, gorgeous. It's, it's, um, uh, thank you, guys. Thank you all for your comments. Your comments mean so much to us. It lets us know that we're not alone. We're not alone. But don't get me wrong, people walking around in New York talking to themselves is not a strange occurrence. <laughs> Especially not during the pandemic. See, these masks that we've been wearing have, uh, you know, people, you could just kind of like mumble to yourself, you know, the last year or so. Nobody really knows because, you know, you, you got a hidden, mask on. You're hidden in the mask. You got a mask on. But Fauci would appreciate. Do hey, listen. You know? By the way, Dr. Fauci went to school a few blocks away from here at Regis High School on the east side. Let's swing over this way, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like the first bloom in the spring in Central Park, which is what we're looking at. Even if we had done this tour about two weeks ago, you wouldn't have seen the, the leaves sort of popping, but they're starting to pop right now. And like I was saying earlier, you come to the park at different times of the year, you get a totally different perspective on the city, but also Central Park in particular. In the winter, it's downright skeletal. You see right through everything. And in the summer, everything is in full bloom. You get shadows. All it's a very, it's a very cool thing to sort oh, of take. Oh, is that a cardinal up there? I think I just saw a cardinal in, in that uh, yellow, in the yellow, yellow plant. In the yellow plant over there. It's quite. Listen, there. Yeah, I mean, it's quite possible. I'm not sure. Do you see it, Alexa? I think it might have just run away. Yeah, I don't see a. I don't see a red. It's there oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh. There. Right. Did you guys catch that? Oh well. I think it might I might have been too zoomed in for it. <laughs> That's fine. You know what? I guarantee you, if there's cardinals here, if you saw one cardinal, you probably heard the term birds of a feather flock together. There'll be other cardinals along the way. By the way, these archways, um, when we walk through them here, this is Calvert Vox's uh, part of his work as well. They have these beautiful little tunnels. And you know, you probably noticed the way my voice changed as we're kind of walking through here. They make, they are amazing acoustically speaking. And as we walk through the park today, I'm pretty sure we'll definitely be hearing um, a couple of saxophone or trumpet or trombone players. Um, they're great places for rehearsal. And I say that, I'm not kidding you. Even for gigging musicians, you got a saxophone and you start practicing in your apartment, your next door neighbor's gonna come by and bop you with something. So these are great, actually, you have great musicians actually practicing um, in the park um, constantly. Is that a cherry? This is not a cherry blossom. What is this type of tree? Jim? A... Jim Gresham, can you help us out with this tree varietal? So, yeah, let's swing over this way there, uh, Chris. Let's, let's, let's get the. Uh... Let's, yeah. Let's swing over this way. Yeah, sorry first. No, 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 take your time. No, 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 let's just swing over this way. People, people have, uh, especially our friends in in Europe have been asking for uh, trees. Okay. I haven't seen many of them. All right, cool. Embarrassed by the crowd, I felt he found my little day. So, one of the things we're walking towards right now is something that has been in the park since it opened. So, like I said, the the park officially fully opens in 1876 and it starts opening in Spurton around 1871. Um, there's always been a menagerie or a zoo in the middle of the park. Can you explain the difference between a menagerie? A menagerie is basically like bird oriented, basically, and smaller animals. A zoo is for like big mammals and things like that. When I was a kid, they used to have elephants and lions in the Central Park Zoo. They do not do that anymore. The zoo was privatized about 30 years ago. So Jim, it's, my, it's a saucer magnolia, sometimes Good called a tulip tree. Wow, Jim. Jim's a pro. Jim is a pro. We gotta no get, joke. I'm like, Jim Gresham, guys, of, uh, Jim Gresham. of Walks of Charleston and Low Country Walking Tours. Holy cow. Captain Jim Gresham. Good going, Jim. Thank you for that information, my friend. Um, so there's always been a, been a zoo here. Um, like I said, they privatized the zoo about 30 years ago. It used to be a city-run zoo. Now it's a privatized zoo within a city-run park. And by the way, um, 
in talking about that and the distinction. Central Park um, is run by the New York City's Parks Department, but there are privatized spaces within the park that are sort of outsourced to uh, I think we're going to do a show right now. Oh, it's always show time. It's sea lion time, right? The sea lion pool has been here. Oh, there's sea lions. Look at that. That's why, that's why we come over here, baby. The sea lion feeding time. How close can we get? In there? Yeah, they're up to, up to here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. What a treat. Hey. I'm going to mask up. So, so, yeah, so, you know, you walk in here. Sorry. Hey, go with you, Walter. You keep talking. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are San Francisco sea lions over here. And since the 1930s, this pool has been here. So it's been feeding time at the zoo here now for about 80 to 90 years, basically, right here in this very uh, location. Cool. Yeah, and then people, yeah, people gather around. So the zoo used to be um, like a free zoo, basically. And nowadays, there's a small donation required because, like, you know, it's a, it's a privatized thing, but it's a very well-run uh, zoo. It's by, run by the same people that run the Bronx Zoo and others like that um, in New York City. So, so far on our tour today, we've seen some interesting trees, okay. some ducks, some turtles, and now some sea lions. Yeah. And we've walked, we've walked one block in from Fifth Avenue. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. When you come, to, you, know, you come to Central Park, it's really like stepping out of the city and into an entirely uh, different world over here. Cool? Okay. So, all right. Thank you for that. Nah, Sorry, guys. No, no, for that. <laughs> so, right behind us over here is a big brick building. Right over here. Back of the building, it's known as the Arsenal. And uh, in uh, Central Park, a lot of things, they're literally, you know, it's, it's a literal translation. This was an arsenal at one time with like live ammo. It was actually built, the park was sort of built around it actually. Mickey asked really quick, is this yeah. zoo bigger than the one in the Bronx? No. The Bronx Zoo is the biggest zoo in the city, actually, by far. This is actually a relatively small zoo, actually. Central Park is a big park, but it's only the fifth biggest park in New York City, even though it's two and a half miles um, across. You know, Central Park is also sort of the driver for um, a lot of the, uh, the parks in the city. It's sort of the gem of the system. When the park opened, like I said, there were only six or seven other public parks. Nowadays, the average New Yorker lives a five-minute walk away from, from a public park, basically. So... Um, you know, it's just, it's just sort of, it sprouted out, it, did, it sort of did its job, basically. A lot of, the city just follows suit after that. Now, an interesting thing to look at right over here is what's known as the Delacorte clock. That, now, that clock looks like it might have been here since the park opened in the 19th century, but actually it's very anachronistic. It's actually from 1965. A man named George Delacorte was a uh, philanthropist, and he donated the money. And if you look around, you got the dancing bear in the front, you got the, the penguin over there. And on the half hour, they do a little dance around. And on the hour, the monkeys at the very top chime the gong up there. So it's sort of in sync with the zoo over here, uh, the, the, the Delacorte clock. Oh, it's pretty cool. I feel bad. Me being late technically meant we missed the clock, maybe. You know, I try to time it out sometimes on the half hour. Yeah. But okay, you, you know what? Those? Oh, good. Just imagine those animals dancing around. That's all you have to do. And as I predicted correctly, you got a practicing musician under one of these archways right over here. A little slide trombone. Yeah, side, other side. Yeah. Nice. Magic. And this is the children's zoo over here, by the way, guys. So, um, petting zoo. You can pet the donkeys and the llamas with your kids and all that and feed them and all that kind of stuff. That's a pretty cool one as well, separate from the other. But like I said, yeah, 
practicing musicians. When I, I'm, I'm talking about some jazz dude you might see in clubs on a, you know, a Friday night or a Saturday night in New York, they actually practice underneath these arches during the week. Because again, if you live in a Manhattan, uh, is that Pan right over there? The, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You go, um, over there. Oh, is that, a, is that Pan over there? Oh, that's right, the Pan flew. Hello, what's wrong with me? Yeah. But if you practice, you know, you're a practicing musician, you gotta, you gotta find some space to do it. You can't do it in your apartment. So these, these archways are perfect for that, for sure. It's all happening at the zoo, as the old song goes. Is that a Simon Garfunkel? It is indeed, yeah. Uh, Teague asked a question earlier on mm -hmm. um, about uh, Broadway. Yeah. Um, and, gosh, where did it go? Um, yeah, when. There are Broadway shows. Mm -hmm. There just stands there. There's a Broadway baseball league in Central Park. There, it's softball league. Yes. Softball so, league. So yes, the soft, the summer softball league, the Heckscher uh, Field, and yes, the Broadway shows do. Uh, they put together teams and everything like that. Every year. Between the competing show, the different Sometimes, shows. Sometimes, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Squirrels all over the park. If I was a squirrel, this is a good park I'd live in Central Park. You get fed very well here. People, oh, yeah. people pay attention to you. Yeah. It's a, it's a win-win situation. Nikki uh, asked, yeah. uh, is Walter a Yankees or a Mets fan? Yankees. You know, it's a good thing, too, because if you'd said Mets, we'd have had to stop the live feed right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yankees, come on. Yeah, yeah come yeah. on, you know. Yeah, I've, on. Been a, I've been a Yankees fan since back in the days of Green Lightning. Hey, man. You know, Gidry, baby. Ron Gidry, baby. You Louisiana know? Lightning. So here's an interesting thing to do. What? Let's take a walk up the Native Meadow here. Oh, yes, really. that and I do this for a specific oh, reason. This might not seem like a particularly interesting thing to do, to walk on a trail like this, right? Except that when you do so, you're walking on ground as it was originally planned for the park. Frederick Law Olmsted, as I said just a little bit earlier about him, very fascinating guy. He was a writer for the New York Times. He was a surgeon and a landscaper as well. This guy kind of did a little bit of everything. He had the idea that he wanted you to get out of that sort of like that, you know, sooty, smoky, you know, urban environment that was creeping up. And he wanted to give you sort of like these adventure paths in this sort of oasis in the middle of the city. Now, you probably guys have noticed as we've been walking through the park, we've been walking on paved roads the entire time. That was not uh, the way the park looked when it first opened. The park had was about 80 to 20 dirt and mulch roads and only about 20 percent paved basically now it's the exact opposite because over the years people don't want to be climbing you know hills and you know getting their shoes all dirty in here so they paved a lot of it over over the years but when you walk on these these um trails that they have you know scattered throughout the park you're walking on the ground as it was sort of originally sort of the idea of, you know sort of the origin basically this is what this is kind of what the original design was kind of like here in olmstead's mind basically Have you also noticed, guys, that we keep turning around constantly on hills? That's by design as well by Olmsted. There is only one distinct straight line in the entire park. I'm going to see it in a minute. But the, the entire park is built on curves and hills. It was really designed to sort of like give you something sort of new around every turn. That was sort of the idea. Alexa asked, mm -hmm. um, is there a pocket park, Collier Brothers, something like close to Central Park? I know Harlem is next to Central Park and it has a very interesting history. Yeah. Collier Brothers, Pocket the, the Park. The Collier Brothers, weren't they... Uh, I'm not familiar with that myself. The Collier Brothers, I think they weren't they hoarders? Wasn't that their thing? Weren't they these guys, they, they collected ephemera? I don't know about Collier Park. I don't know about Collier Park. Well, you gonna, stumped me. I'm going to pan over. Yeah, it's, hey, look, you, put, you get to be stumped every once in a while. Yeah, it happens. You know, you know so much. With, with, oh, oh, believe me, you can, you can stump me, believe me. Really pretty. Oh yeah, no, it's the purple's blooming. Oh, lilacs. Is that what that is? I think so. Gosh, well, I'm, I'm not a good. I'm but a you're not a bot. 
No. But I do know that if you are an extrovert, you get a bit of a, a hit when you see someone's face. All right. And if you're an introvert, you get that same kind of lift uplifting feeling yeah. when you look at a beautiful tree or a beautiful plant. All right, look at that. So for all the introverts out there, thank you, bless you. Yeah. And these, these plants are for you. Again, if you, and Chris, if you just pan out just a little bit this way, check this out in the background through the trees. That's Fifth Avenue, apartment buildings like right across the way. And we've seen sea lions, ducks, cardinals, mm -hmm. these beautiful blooming flowers, like yeah. all over, just like one step in basically, Even right small over. Wildflowers wild flowers in there. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous stuff. So what I want to do is swing over this way. So when you're done over here, just follow me this way and we'll get across the street. Yeah, no, do your thing, do your thing, do your thing. I just wanna just, just wanna get. Yeah. All right, now do your gonna, thing. At one point or thing. another, we're gonna hand the camera over to Walter yeah. and then he's just gonna, he's gonna self stream and be in charge of both. As a, uh, as a, uh, you know, yeah, just show me how to, f just to show me to flip, time. flip the, uh, flip the, flip the reverse, basically. Yeah, these are, these are beautiful. Yeah. Gosh, we really, we couldn't have picked a better day. Huh? Nope. This is it. Yeah, it's, it's. What's your favorite part of the city to give tours in, Walter? My favorite part of the city to give tours in? That's a good question. Um, you know, I, I kind of like, I like doing mid, I like talking about Broadway and all the buildings in Midtown. That's a fun place to do it. And the reason it's fun is because a lot of people assume that it's not a great place to do tours in. I've always thought that. Because like, well, I've seen this already, but there's a lot of, a lot of deep history there that you can really get into. Whereas, you know, obviously when we do our tour downtown, the free tour of Fitzsandaman, there's a, of course, that's the origin story of New York City. It's great. And there's a lot of deep history. That's obviously deep history. But there's a lot of deep history in some of the less obvious places. I kind of dig that. Now, where we're going to walk down now um, is known as the promenade. It's the one straight line in the park. We're going to walk down there. Sort of get it's also known as the literary walk. Mm. And if you're doing a literary walk, Who's better to start off a literary walk than Shakespeare, right? right. Come on, this is kind of where you start. Um, and this, this, this statue was cast by John Quincy Adams Ward back in 1870. So uh, he cast it right as the park was opening. Shakespeare and Central Park are synonymous. In fact, you know, a minute ago when we were by the zoo, I mentioned that beautiful clock, the Delacourt clock. We also have a thing called the Delacourt Theater, right in the middle of Central Park. They do free Shakespeare in the park every summer. So uh, when you come to New York, there's two shows per summer, uh, usually run about a month each. You get your tickets in the morning, you come back at night. And over the years, I've seen Al Pacino and Anne Hathaway in these sort of shows. They have very big stars come in and do these amazing shows. And it's all free, basically, it's free Shakespeare in the park. Uh, so Shakespeare in Central Park. Unless you don't want to wait for a ticket and then you pay. Then you, then, well, you could pay. But there's, there's ways to do that too, I suppose. Uh, uh, well, you, you're, uh, you're an actor yourself, Walter. I am indeed. And do you do Shakespeare? Or, or you know, I have or? done Shakespeare. I've done it in Central Park, but not Shakespeare in the park. There was, there's another, there's a couple of smaller theaters in the park uh -huh. that I've done. Um, but I'm not, I would not call myself a classical um, actor by trade, though. Uh -huh. I do more uh -huh. modern kind of we thing. All gotta, we all got to have a niche. We all have a we niche, all, we you know. We all have a niche. Hey, here's an interesting thing to look at. These little inscriptions on the ground here. You know, you'll see American Elm endowed by, you know, these uh, folks over here, these nice people. What are they doing that for? Well... If you look down right here, this is known as the promenade right down here. And these people have adopted trees on the promenade. And they've done it through an organization known as the Central Park Conservancy. The Central Park Conservancy started in 1980 because at that time, New York City had a very severe budget gap. There wasn't enough money coming in to pay for all the goods in the city. And Central Park was in sort of a state of what you call disrepair at the time. Uh, much dirtier. Oh yeah, give, give me, I get, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Oh, yeah. oh, much sorry. dirtier, 
um, crime, all kinds of things like that. The Conservancy was started up in 1980 to make up for that budget gap. So concerned citizens donated money for the upkeep of the park. One of the ways they do so is by adopting trees. And as we walk down, we'll look at the benches. They all have these little markers in them. They say, hey, hey, hi, honey, you know, happy birthday. Um, you know, you, you actually, um, you, know, you, you sort of uh, pay for the upkeep of the park through the Central Park Conservancy. So technically, again, the park is run by the New York City's Parks Department, but there are, there are organizations that are outsourced to sort of keep the upkeep. Now, like I said before, it's also known as the literary walk. Well, Nikki, Nikki asked about the, the two Scottish author poets that are they're, part of literature. Well, they are. It seems like they're right they're at the right start. Across, <laughs> right over here. Quite early. So Robert Burns right over here, you know. You might be like, well, who's Robert Burns? And I'm like, well, have you ever celebrated New Year's Eve and you sang Old Lang Syne? You have recited some Robert Burns poetry right across the way. And across from Robert Burns staring at him is Walter Scott. And he is the author of Ivanhoe and Waverly, amongst other uh, books. And as a shout out to Nikki and Ross, yeah. Ross works at Waverly Station in Edinburgh. Oh, look at that. Uh, which is very close to the Scott Memorial. Look at you. Look at this over here. Yeah. It all ties in, doesn't it, Chris? It all ties in together. So, so we got Shakespeare. We got Sir Walter Scott. We have Robert Burns. You want, to, you want to see my favorite literary statue? No, I do. Let's go up here. <laughs> I'm Let's having so much here. fun, by the way. Oh, this is a great like, You are filling me with so much joy oh. doing this tour. All right, good. It's a beautiful day. Yay. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think it's the weather more than anything else. Oh, no, I'm... it's you and your knowledge and, and your, 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 you know, uh, the, your connections, the way you bring it together. Thank you weave you. history and present and you know you hope for you help me hope for a future cool. you know? so let's do this one first and then we'll do that one so let's go to the right first there's two statues over here we definitely have to talk about both of them so of the literary statues in the park and there are more like hans christian anderson is on the other side of us and things like that but my favorite is right here this is a guy named fitz green halleck now I mentioned Shakespeare, I mentioned Robert Burns. You're like, yeah, I know who those guys are. I guarantee you no one's like, oh yeah, Fitz Green Halleck. I know who that guy is. Why did, look at this guy's statue. He's got the pen in the, in the right hand over there. He's got the pad in the left hand. He's got the cool sideburns. He's draped, he's, look, that's a pretty detailed statue. It's right on Robert Burns statue or Shakespeare statue. And the question is, who the heck is Fritz Green Halleck? And the answer is nowadays, nobody could tell you. You know who he was? He was a writer of light verse. And back in the, back in the 19th century, um, the papers, notably the New York Times and the New York Evening Post, they would print like light verse, like, you know, aphorisms and little, like, you know, sort of rhyming couplets in the paper, like sort of like Hallmark greetings. This guy wrote this cheesy purple prose for the papers. How does he get in the park with Shakespeare? He was friends with Frederick Law Olmsted, and he was also friends with William Cullen Bryant, who ran the post. So how did he get the statue in the park? Pure nepotism. It worked in the 19th century, and it works today. So if you ever wonder who this guy is and why he's on par with Shakespeare, he was friends with the owners, basically. That's kind of how it worked out. I shifted away from you just because I got a, a comment that we were freezing a little bit okay. on bandwidth. Cool. So sometimes I'll move spot. Move it, do what you gotta do, baby. So this statue over here is the newest statue in Central Park. And in fact, I have to tell you, I haven't seen it yet due to the pandemic. It was dedicated last summer. I have not been distinctly right here in over a year. This is the Women's Rights Pioneers statue. And it was uh, designed by a woman uh, named Meredith Bergman. And three women are represented here on the statue. To the left is Sojourner Truth. She's the lady with the glasses. To the right is Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And in the middle is Susan B. Anthony. So Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony uh, basically were, the, the, basically they, they began uh, the Equal Rights, American Equal Rights Association um, in, in America with the idea that women, strange, crazy idea, they should have the right to vote. Sojourner Truth was a lady who escaped slavery and became an advocate for abolition and also for women's rights in this country. So 
Meredith Bergman, who um, designed this statue, she was, she's also done film production work over the course of time, by all accounts. And something like 25 years ago, in the mid-90s, she was doing you know, pre-production for a film, and she was going through Central Park for locations, and she realized something. There were no women, no real-life women, represented anywhere in the park at all. The only female statue she saw was that of Alice from Alice in Wonderland, but of course that's a fictional character. So she's like, this needs to be rectified. And 25 years later, in 2020, um, her, her monument to these uh, women who basically fought for you know, the women's right to vote and equal, yes? So I have to jump in really quick. Hey, uh, Wesley Curry, um, we banned you the other day. Uh, the, this, um, this chat is not for your politics. Uh, or for your posting, um, so please, please stop. This is, you know, we're here for history. We're here to share joy and love, uh, and not to use this as a political front. It's also only a place for English language posts. So as much as I love the Hebrew language, uh, please stop posting on our our live streams. And uh, if one of the moderators could please uh, put um, good old Wesley Curry the Third into a cool down, um, I will ban him permanently when I get back to the computer. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no problem. But so that's what happens the, when you start to get enough people on, to, uh, on your tours, then people start posting so, stuff. Yeah, but, that's yeah. the, but that's the story of the statue. So she was like, hey, there's no women represented. Let's rectify this. Yeah. And that's the result. It's a beautiful statue, don't you think, Chris? Yeah, what I think, think it's gorgeous. It's, it's, a great, it's a great uh, addition. I always have a bittersweet... Um, I always have a bittersweet moment um, when... Uh, uh, when I talk about when we talk about um, women getting the right right to vote, yes, because I know unfortunately that part of the reason that women were able to get the right to vote, mm -hmm. um, or were you know that let's say um, post reconstructionist senators would would approve that push that through was that they were trying to counter the effect of the black male vote. Absolutely, sure. Um, right, and they right. figured that having white women be able to vote would then so balance the out gate. the additional black votes That's that were coming right. in and still allow for like the white hegemony right. to be in control. Right. It's bitter. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the right thing to have. I mean, it's good, you know, yes. but also at the time, it just goes to show that there are more than one way to roam. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so, so, speaking of like being on a path, we are again on the one straight line of the park. This is by design. This is actually, and of course, and of the things that opened in the park, the mall, the promenade walkway down here towards what we're going to now, which is known as Bethesda Terrace and Bethesda Town, which I'll get into this issue when we get over there, is was the one set piece in the park that opened first, basically. So this is this was sort of a Calvert Vox's and sort of a Frederick Law Olmsted's says sort of magnum opus in the park right here um, in the center. And Chris, by the way, I've mentioned it before. This is what I was talking about. You, you, you do a little dedication on the bench. You, know, you pay a certain amount of money, and it, it's in perpetuity, depending on how long you want it up. Or I guess it could be for a few years, not in perpetuity. But you can do it in perpetuity as well. And basically, your donations on these benches. And by the way, we have roughly a thousand benches in the park or so. Um, you know, they all, a lot, many of them have these plaques and they are utilized, uh, these donations are utilized for the upkeep of the parks. When you do that, you're paying into sort of the upkeep of, of the park. Yeah. Uh, this guy's still posting. Okay. I gotta ask someone to So in the distance, you hear. Hey, can you go over to YouTube and block uh, this guy from posting on the YouTube channel? Yeah, it's the same guy from the other day. He's still posting. I'm asking to stop. He's not stopping. If, if so, I can't, like the only way I can do it is to stop the feed and, and go in and, and stop. Him. Uh, I'm not sure. Why don't you just go and, and just check? Like you can report him and try to stop him. Uh, uh, cool. Cool. Sorry. Nah, no problem. Nope. He's posting like tons of stuff, and he, like the moderators even... are having trouble getting in. Okay. So I'll just try to get in myself. Okay. So, like I said, we were gonna hear some music in the park today.
So we just focused on the benches before, right? Mm -hmm. We focused on the benches before? Yeah. So you notice these benches are a great deal different with the cast iron posts in the middle and these sort of older looking backs. These are older benches, basically. These are what the benches look like when the... Now, the seats have been changed over the years because people have been sitting in them for over 100 years or the weight goes down. But the backs and these cast iron posts are basically intact and they are the... They are, these are what the benches would have looked more like when the park opens. So if you want to know what the park... More of a Parisian kind of look than the, than the green benches that we're looking at right over here, basically. Cool. So let's walk over this way. Uh, do you need a license to play music in the park? What now? You know what? You're technically not supposed to play music in the park. That was my way yeah. of whispering it, basically. You're not supposed to do it. It's unenforceable in the cops, really. They don't bother you unless you're being really obnoxious about it. That's that center player has been there for years. I've been watching him play for 20 years. He's been uh, there. That's his spot. That's his spot. I think we've managed to block this guy now. Good, so. good, good, good. So what we're, no, we're walking towards right now is known as Bethesda Terrace. Bethesda Terrace is sort of, Calvin Fox is sort of, um, again, it's sort of his masterpiece um, in the park. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk down underground over there. We're gonna come out the other side and talk about Bethesda Fountain. Oh, nice. Uh, Katie Yana uh, asks, how often do New Yorkers actually go to uh, Central Park? What a great and, question. And also, I, how are yeah. the snacks there? Um, hello from Germany. Okay, great. Katie, is that Katie? Yeah. Well, so Katie. Asra. What's her name? No, nah, it's the handle is Katie Yana DA, okay. but Azra is what they signed, uh, what the person signed this. Okay. So anyway, let's, yes. go, let's go with Katie Yana. Sure. So Katie, Anna, um, there are roughly 42 million visitors to the park every year. However, there are not 42 million individuals that come to the park. There are about 9 million people that come to the park every year. Um, so basically what that means is, is that people make multiple trips. So if you're in New York, you come to the park on average about four to five times a year, basically. And if, obviously if you live in Manhattan, uh, more than that, but if, that was the question, right? How many, how many New Yorkers come to the park? Yeah, if New Yorkers come. Yeah, you know, if like, re, re, I mean, I would answer yes as well. If I, when I was living at 90th and Central Park West, I'd come and jog every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they they guesstimate that it's about 42 million visitors, and most of them are from the city, okay. like three quarters. And how about the snacks, the food? The, the snacks, you know, some places are there are actually sit down restaurants in the park, like Tavern on the Green and the Boathouse Cafe. Uh, the snacks in the park are fine. You get a good pretzel. It's nothing like a New York pretzel. Come on. Right. You get good pretzels here. So, yeah, I would say the snacks are... Can I ask the quick. audience a question? What? Can you guys name a TV show or movie that you have seen this place that we're heading through right now in? Have you ever seen a TV show or a movie in New York? Let us know in the chat. Tell Ooh. us in the chat. All right. Ooh. All right. Ooh. So, above us here are tiles. John Mould, the 19th century textilist. Um, these are his tiles. They were restored back in the 1990s. I don't, about 20 years ago, they reopened uh, the, the sort of walkway, uh, pathway out to Bethesda Terrace over here. And so these are 19th century tiles, but they've been restored fully, and the light hits them in all their beautiful uh, grandeur, basically. Like I said, you're going to get some music on this tour today and all that stuff. So this is Bethesda Terrace. Sorry, real quick. Wow. Hey guys, sorry, I uh, didn't realize that we weren't getting signal in the tunnel. Um, uh -huh. Clearly we'll, um, uh -huh. we'll, uh, we'll load the whole video up later on. Uh, we didn't do a walkthrough ahead of time. I didn't think about it. Of course, that tunnel would have been bad for signal for us. So. 
So, so. Can, can, sorry. Can everyone just let just let us know once the signal is back again? You just read here. You can see there's lots of comments. There. Oh, okay. So you guys just let us know that you got the signal back again. Uh, I just write in the chat that you're connecting with us again. If not, we'll just keep on moving. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Diana is asking um, if you could uh, let us know, um, Walter, uh, about the ceiling okay. back in there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So if you saw the, the textiles on the ceiling, so this right here, if you focus back this way, Chris, yeah. you can look up. this is Bethesda Terrace. So if you read the Bible, um, the town of Bethesda, um, Jesus went to Bethesda and he used the waters to heal crippled people and make them walk again. That's sort of the metaphor. So this is a place of healing. Under the ground there, on the ceiling, um, are textile, are, are the ceiling textiles by John Moore. He's a 19th century textile from England. And they were in very bad disrepair. And they basically took them down during the 1980s. They were sitting in storage for a while. They cleaned them up about 20, like 15 years ago, and they reopened the tunnels. Those, those are 19th century. So those, those, those are restored and cleaned literally by, inch by inch, basically. Amazing. Now, Bethesda Terrace leads you out right behind us over here. I mean, this is Bethesda Fountain. This is sort of the whole, this is the culmination of, of the entire structure. Bethesda Fountain is dedicated to the soldiers who were lost at sea during the Civil War. The angel on the water, the healing water, she's basically washing over those soldiers who were lost at sea. That's sort of the metaphor. The angel on the water, was designed by Emma Stebbins. Emma Stebbins was the first woman in New York City to get a public arts commission for the very statue that we are looking at right here. And it's been part of the park now since 1876, right? So isn't that pretty interesting? And it is one of the more iconic parts of the entire park. Again, it really is the centerpiece of the park in many ways. So let's roll over this way. Balto, he's on the other side of us. A lot of statues in the, you know, there's about you know, 85 statues in the park. You got Balto, Alice in Wonderland, any number of them. Unfortunately, can't get to them all on a tour like this. Not on this one. If you come though to New York when Sandman's is fully running again, you can definitely see the Balto and Alice in Wonderland statues. Oh dear, the kid, the Balto, did you battle run? Just ask him how we're doing for the signal. There's, it might, I don't know how choppy it is. This might not be the, it might, you know what I mean? Like, uh, how's it? How's the signal, guys? Now is it better now? We've moved around the other side of the the, the fountain. I just I'm concerned that you guys aren't watching this right now. I just want to make sure you got you catch it. Okay, you've got a thumbs up. So yeah. It's on again now. Go. Cool. So the lake. What can you do in Central Park besides walk, look at birds and turtles and seals, and snack? You can row on the water. So that's the low boathouse right over there. You, you rent the boat. Go out on the water, paddle around. You'll notice no one's wearing uh, life jackets. Well, maybe somebody's little kids are out yonder. And the reason for that the water's about a foot and a half deep, so if you turn over, it's gonna get really muddy, basically. Again, it's pumped in water, again, controlled, all that stuff, but, uh, and the lake, you know, weaves around. We'll check out the, the, the full scope of it. Now, across the way over there, you see that uh, structure with the copper roof over there. That's the Boathouse Cafe. Um, two sit-down oh. restaurants. Yep, it's a turtle in the water. There, are, yeah, yeah, we got some turtles on there. Um, but that's the Boathouse Cafe over there. Boathouse Cafe is one of two restaurants in the park the other one is tavern on the green so if you want to actually sit down in the park and have lunch or dinner on the water you can do that right across the way um, yeah. um, he asked before how safe is the park at night and also there was a question um, about uh, besides law and order which Jim guess uh, what other movies have been what other TV shows have been here? Are you asking me? Yeah, if you know. Oh, of course I do. But I mean, I don't. I don't first of all, it's too many to count. First of all, is the answer. But um, 
I was just watching I Am Legend the other night. There's, there's stuff in Central Park going on right there. Will Smith. Uh, Kramer versus Kramer is a very famous scene right where we were walking before with Dustin Hoffman and his son. Um, TV shows. Into the light there was a, the dark light. There was a show called Central, like the CPW, right? But I'm not sure they actually shot in the park. But I know Gossip Girl definitely did. They definitely shot in the park. There's a, there's, a, there's, a ton, there's a ton of things that, was, that have been shot in the park. Right? How much is it to rent a boat, Shannon? Now? They're actually relatively cheap. It's like 20 bucks an hour or for the half hour. It's not that expensive, actually. So it's a, pretty, it's a relatively inexpensive experience. You get to row on the water. That was last I checked, anyway. It's always, getting, it's always going up, never going down in That's New York. Usually, usually. Oh, yeah, by the way, so as vis-a-vis uh, the, -vis the question... How safe is it in the park? I'd say it's very safe unto itself. But if it's after dark and you don't know where you're going, probably a good idea to take the Crosstown bus through the park. Um, just because, and it's, it's, it's just easy enough to see right here. Imagine it was pitch black right now. Mm. You can't see around the other end, basically. Yeah. And it's gonna get a little bit desolate. But unto itself, I've walked through the park a million times after dark, nothing's ever happened to me. But, unto itself, one of, the, one of the coolest things you can do in, in New York City is actually ride the Crosstown bus. Uh, Central Park, like I said, is in the middle of the city. So, going from the east side to the west side, if you, if you do it by train, you have to go downtown, cross town, and then back up again. The Crosstown bus just shoots you right through the park, basically. I know, I know. So, well, color coordinated with your... The guy with it. Yeah, he's got, he's got the yellow. mustard and yellow. Can you speak to how it feels being here right now with the birds and the sun? How does it feel? It feels like, um, well, it feels like renewal, basically. That's what sort of spring is. This is actually a, like I said, this is actually, um, also in terms of um, the park via, you know, in terms of COVID, you know, the COVID era, um, it feels kind of nice to see people out and everybody's being pretty cool, you know, everybody's distancing properly and uh, masking up. So I'm, so I'm encouraged. It's, it feels good to kind of be out here today. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And for those of you, for those who are tuning in, let me just, so I know you guys do the Celsius over, over the, across the pond. So it's 17 Celsius right now, uh -huh. which is 63 degrees. Fahrenheit, which is perfect spring weather, basically. It feels even warmer than that. The, the sun. sun's beautiful. Yeah, the sun's hitting us beautifully right now. I'd like to ask if that was a magnolia tree. It looks like one. It yeah. does look like one. But you know what? I could be wrong. We should ask Jim. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Jim's going to have to be the foliage. Jim's the, uh, the foliage the, guy. The botanist, the arborist, yeah. uh, oh. moderator. So. So let's swing over here. I want to get a good perspective on this bridge from across the way. Get you a nice sort of view of it from over here, actually. This is known as the Bow Bridge, guys. So all the bridges that Calvin Vox designed, there were, there were nine of them in the park. They all have a little bit of a distinct sort of feel to them. The Bow Bridge is cast iron. It's the original cast iron from the 19th century. And uh, sure, wherever you want, man. Wherever you think the best view is. I think it's usually over here, but go for it over here. And this is fine. This is, this is fine over here. Yeah, so this is actually very good right here if you want. This is actually fine. This is actually brilliant. Um, um, and it gets this name because it has sort of that, it's the curse of like an archer's bow, basically. That's how it gets the name, the bow bridge. And it's a rare day you don't see wedding photos being taken up there or right over here or on the other back. It's a beautiful sort of a, it's a beautiful just sort of backdrop. Um, and as you see, we walked, you know, we walked around the bend. That lake continues. It's, you know, and again, pumped in water. You got the, you know, you got got a little island right there in the middle. You can kind of get off and kind of row around for a while. It's not when I say you can row around the park. It's not like a little. Uh, and oh, yes, our geese very well fed, and they come. They're pretty friendly. They right. come right over. Yeah, they come over. They get fed all the time. Now, you're technically not supposed to feed the wildlife in the park. Um, he's, well, oh yeah, you got the mouth open there. He's ready. 
Um, you're not supposed to feed the wildlife in the park, but nobody adheres to that. People, these are very, again, if I was a goose or a duck, I'd live in the park as well. And as you see, as we sort of panned around to the other side of the park over this way, we started on the east side of Manhattan. This is the west side of Manhattan now. This is Central Park West over there. And that two-tiered building over there, that's the San Remo. Beautiful luxury apartment building. Opened in 1906, I believe. And over the years, the former head of Columbia Records, Mitch Miller, had the top, the top story, like a top story penthouse up there. And other many other famous people have lived there over the years. And uh, it's one of the real gems of the city in terms of, you know, just like you know, apartment architecture. And we'll get, by the end of the tour, we'll wrap up in front of the most famous apartment building in a few minutes, actually. So we're walking up now what's known as Cherry Hill. This one we can definitely identify as Cherry Blossoms because that's how it gets its name. So this is Cherry Hill right over here, the abundance. Of, and they are all in bloom as you can see. This is, a, again, a perfect day for this. I'm going to start taking... It's like legalization around yeah, here. Oh my goodness. Well, it has been legalized. They stopped enforcing it a long time ago. You know, it's technically illegal to smoke anything in the park. Oh yeah? If anybody was wondering. That makes sense. Fire. Yeah. It's been that way for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see this nice day for a family-oriented picture thing. This is it, man. This is a perfect day. That's cute. So, a cool thing you'll notice, oh, watch out behind oh, this gentleman. Nah, no problem. So a thing you'll notice in the park over here, you probably, if you walk through, there's any number of them, are these rounds. What are they here for? What do they do? Well, you see these guys on the pedicab bikes over here. They're sort of over here. And if you ever, if you notice, maybe in the very beginning of the tour, you may have seen a couple of horse and carriages outside the park. And they kind of like, you know, weave the horses around here. These are a remnant of the 19th century. Because you can't back, you can't back a horse and carriage up. You got to wheel it around and get it back out on the road. If they were designing this park nowadays, you'd have a driveway, basically, probably. Right. But these are a remnant of the 19th century. So when you see people sort of doing the bikes, and the horse and carriages around the ground, they are doing what it, they were originally set out to do in the 19th century. So you can smell horse? You can definitely smell horse manure yeah, in the park. It's, a, they, it's been a uh, constant, really. And that's one thing, if you ever, uh, maybe we'll see a horse and carriage going by, and I'll focus on it more, but um, it's sort of a pass on the park that might not be here for, you know, forever, because they're talking about banning horse and carriage rides, basically. But for now, they still do exist. How are we for timing right now? We're, we're going to wrap up in a few minutes. Okay. So what do you think? Like five, ten minutes? Yeah. Ten yeah. minutes. Yeah. All right. Ten, Here you go, guys. Ten minutes. Ten minutes uh, till wrap. Just so you guys have a sense of it. I never like to throw cold water on them. Ten minutes till I wrap. I'm going to do the whole thing in rhyming verse at the end. Ryan's desperate to hang out with you. He's, oh, Ryan! He, I love that guy. He wants to know how you're gigging. He wants to know who you're voting for mayor. Yeah. He wants to know I'm if you're running for mayor. <laughs> I he, would de if he runs with me, if I'm, I could be his deputy mayor. He has to run for me. I'd be his deputy. I'd help manage the campaign. He can help manage the want. campaign. Look at that. Um, but no, yeah. For those who have been taken towards Ryan, was uh, is our one of our finest guides in the Sandman's family. Well, I think is, he's going to give me a tour in Montana not man, too long from guy, now. That guy is. Nothing but entertain, pure entertainment. That guy is awesome. He got facts coming out, you know, just anywhere. He's, he's great. This is, this is the pure Ryan love show. Ryan, we love you. We miss you. See you back in New York soon or Montana before then. <laughs> Yeah, so like I said, we're weaving now, you know, towards, you know, 
Central Park West over here. We'll, we'll end on the street in a little bit. Before we do though, we're gonna walk into what I prop was prop might be the most sought after little spot in the park, and that's called Strawberry Fields. I'm gonna walk up to it right now and talk about the history of Strawberry Fields. Is that connected right to the famous song? You better believe it. That's a special one for Jeanette right there. She's a Beatles fan for sure. Hey, you're talking to the biggest Beatles and Yankees fan in the world than me. So. Really? Oh, yeah. I did not know about the oh, Beatles. Oh, man. Come on. Oh, man. There's just music in the air today, isn't there? There's like eight different uh, musicians playing in here. We hadn't been doing this tour together today. I, I think I would have needed to come here anyway. Yeah. It's just, is... it's a beautiful day here. Oops. Yeah. This is it. So Strawberry Fields, we're walking into it right now. So let's talk a little bit about it. So Strawberry Fields has technically been in... Um, you want to you wanna, you wanna do it? Do sure. You, you want me to... Oh, sure. Let me just, let me just un, unzap her. Um, guys, we're just doing a quick changeover. You put that on your thumb like that. All right. And then keep there. Try not to press any buttons here and try not to... Try to keep your thumb up a little bit higher and try not to pull it down. Okay. If you can put your thumb up a little bit higher, yeah, there you go, there All you right. go. And that way, that way that cord doesn't get too much All power right, on cool. it. And now okay. you're in charge, brother. All righty, cool. So Strawberry Fields, so technically been open since 1982. And you'll notice a lot of different uh, fauna, oh, excuse me, fauna varietals around here. There are in fact 99 different plants and flowers here within Strawberry Fields. They come from different regions of the world and they were um, sent over here with the idea that they could grow in New York City uh, perennially. Why? Well, in 1980, and we're gonna talk about it a little bit more when we go outside in a minute, but uh, John Lennon was lived um, across the way in, in a building called the Dakota with his wife, Yoko Ono. And Lennon, unfortunately, was murdered um, in front of his building on December 8th, uh, 1980. And after Lennon's murder, after Lennon's murder, um, fans would gather outside of the building and Yoko Ono, his wife, said, you know what? We're right across from the park. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could set aside a small section in memory of John where his fans could go and commiserate? So that's the idea behind Strawberry Fields. So there are 99, again, plants and flowers sent throughout the world. So much excitement. The one physical gift is the imagined symbol, which is tile from Naples, Italy. It's dedicated from Naples, Italy. And people come here every day and sort of pay their respects to the great John Lennon. They always have musicians playing in the background as well. A lot of times they're playing Beatles songs. And, uh, and now for nearly 40 years, this has sort of been the place where people um, come. So let's talk a little bit of a stroll over this way. And we'll walk out onto the edge of the park here. Oops. A little bit of that. How's that? Is that comfortable for you? A little bit awkward? No, it's fine. Okay. Careful where your, where your thumb is. That's the power <laughs> off button. Just see that. All right. So yeah, so and we'll you can go. See, at the same time as you're holding it, you can see that people are asking you questions as well at the same time. So you can always just read these up and then see what the, if you want to, you know, uh, then, uh, yeah, yeah. So let's see, who has questions? See no. how your hand's now in front of the camera though? So when you're doing the self-streaming, you always keep an I'm, eye on, okay. the, on the frame. Yeah. And then you let that be your eye. So that's what they see too at the same time. Awesome. Thank you. Oh yeah, of course. So let's go right over here across the street and talk about the building across the way. Are you going to make them 
this is the biggest star right now. Yeah, that's the Dakota apartment building right across the way. And it opens in 1876. Now, it opened in 1876, which is about the same time that the park opened. And when the, when the, uh, when the building opens, there's not much around here. And that's why, what do you, what do you point at? Just tell me. No, no, uh, just just tell me. Yeah, so when you, I'll take it back. Yeah. Just when you're, when you're, when you're holding the, the camera, um, then you just want to, you, you know, Can we you, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we'll just finish it up like this, it's fine. We'll do another, we'll, we'll, we'll do some practice later on the rest of it. Please go ahead. Yeah. So when the building opens, there's not much around here. Remember what I was saying earlier in the tour? This was stony ground, pig farms, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, all kinds of stuff like that. This was the first luxury apartment building in all of New York City. It really has a great piece of architectural innovation. Edward Clark is the architect's name. And it was his idea that people with the money to do so would live like people with less money, i.e. in apartments, not in great estates, if you gave them the amenities that they would expect in a home. And that's the idea behind the Dakota. Now, the Dakota gets its name Again, because no one lived here at the time, and other architects would jibe at um, Edward Clark and say, hey, how's your building in the Dakotas coming? Which is a joke here in the United States, because South Dakota and North Dakota are very sparsely um, sort of populated parts of the country. Um, the idea was, that was sort of like the joke, oh, there's nobody up there. Well, the joke was on them, because what is more New York City in terms of modern architecture than tall, high-rise, luxury apartment building. This was the very first shot um, in that camp way back when. And again, it opened in conjunction with the park. And we also were talking a little bit as we went through the tour today about, you know, the east side with Trump Tower and the Plaza Hotel. We talked about the San Remo and now the Dakota. The, the real estate around the park is some of the most lucrative in the entire world because of its connectivity to the park. Um, basically is some of the highest rents in the city on either side of the park, the east side and Central Park West and South um, over there. Uh, other than that, the, before the park opened, this would have been considered a very undesirable place to live. But with the park as sort of this oasis in the middle of the city, it became the spot that everybody wanted to live in. So I guess that, that's a good place to wrap the tour today. So let's wrap it up. So hey, it was nice walking through with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. Let's let's let, maybe maybe we end back just away from the street because it's because it's it's loud with the yeah. Just tell me what whatever you yeah, want. Whatever, yeah, whatever. Just a yeah. Just that that it's prettier. It's a prettier backdrop to say goodbye right here. I don't know. I like streets. That 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 uh, ice cream wagon was. Uh, I was yeah. picking them up on our. Side. Oh yeah, no, it's the. Uh, See here we go. Here we go. Ooh, these are cool. Yeah, I'll have you on this side so I get that just so that you got you're yeah, in the light. All right. And now yeah. All right. Well, so yeah, so let's wrap. So hey, it was I, I hope any does anybody have any further questions? We'll wrap it up and feel free to chime them in there to me and I'll feel free to answer them. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Our perfect spring walk. We could just sort of subtitle it that way, but yeah. People are just saying thank you and goodbye. No, man. thank you. Thank you all for joining us. It was, a, it was a pleasure having you. I had a good time. I hope you guys did as well. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thanks. Thank you, Shannon. Guys, worth just say, yeah. pointing out really quick, thank you, Teague, uh, for, uh, and Shannon as well, but Teague primarily uh, for helping moderate uh, this tour today um, and doing the posts for donations. Um, Walter hasn't really talked about it, but 100% of donations go to Walter. You've seen the links going up um the walter hoffman retirement fund exactly uh so thank you guys thank you christina zacho um thank you Jeanette, nessia muito obrigado obrigadissimo uh jericho oliva so happy to get you out of the house to come and explore a little bit Michaela, always a pleasure vielen vielen dank to davos wie immer um christina from denmark good night have a great weekend no, oh. week? Sorry, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, yeah.
Well, that's what happens when you work 100 hours a week. You <laughs> lose track. Um, and thank you, Diana, for donating. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Diana. Polly, dude, always a pleasure. Thanks for being there. Um, thank you, Alexa. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for the botany advice. Or totally. Tips Couldn't have done without you. Know. Great. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Would you do the honors? What's that? Pressing the end button there at the top right-hand corner. Sure. Bye.